We can say it. There's spoilers in this. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. We're going to be talking about Light Lark this week. So we've both read Light Lark. We're basically going to do, be doing a little book review about it. So to go ahead and just hop right into the topic, Light Lark is by Alex Astor, and it was published on August 23rd of 2023. And the excerpt for the book is Welcome to the Centennial. Every hundred years, the island of Lightlark appears to host the Centennial, a deadly game that only the rulers of the six realms are invited to play. The invitations is a summons, a call to embrace victory and ruin and blood. The Centennial offers the six rulers one final chance to break the curses that have plagued their realms for centuries. Each ruler has something to hide. Each realm's curse is uniquely wicked. To destroy the curses, one ruler must die. Isla Crown is the youngest ruler of Wildling, a realm of temptress cursed to kill anyone they fall in love with. They are feared and despised and are counting on Isla to end their suffering by succeeding at the centennial. To survive, Isla must lie, cheat, and betray, even as love complicates everything. That's a big task. That's a big task. Yes, it is. So, I figure we'll jump into the curses of each of each group. Yeah. Because there's, like, they're different worlds. Now, this is the part I wasn't totally sure about. They're different species, races. They're not human, right? Correct. So, how... Ha- lings? The what? Lings? Like, she's a wild ling, so she's a... Whatever. Like, is the species ling and the wild is the race? That's actually a good question. I'm going to go ahead and say maybe. I took them as like very <laughs> different realms. So like layers of a universe or realms in a universe. And so they were different okay. species. Now, I may have missed it, but I didn't hear if there was like unique physical attributes about each of them. I know they wear like the color, like specific colors. But. The sunlings weren't, like, difficult to look at because they were so bright or had, you know, sun shooting out of their ass or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) I think that, okay, so I today was looking at some stuff for this episode and I saw some fan art or, like, art, character art for these books on the on her tiktok page or instagram page or something and they did not look how i imagined they looked in my head they're very they're not they're not just people they are just people they just kind of look like normal people interesting okay i was just curious because again i listen to the audiobook and i'm going to brag about that the entire time um but <laughs> that also means I've probably missed some stuff. Um, and so I was just curious if I missed, like, their character or, like, realm physical descriptions. I didn't really... There was some, but it wasn't that different. It was maybe just, like, someone being slightly more tan or pale. Like, mm-hmm. Nightbane okay. people had were very ashen because... But actually, they might be Tanner because they, the curses. Yeah, I don't know. This, these are good questions. I didn't really think about this when I was reading, and I don't remember this part because I listened a few months. I did listen to audiobook too, but it was a few months ago. Hmm. Because this was my yeah, book recommendation to Kristen, and she's probably going to hurt my feelings. She probably didn't like it. It's not a personal attack. You didn't write it. <laughs> there, no, there was things that I liked and things that I – it's not that I didn't like it. There's things that I didn't understand about it. That's fair. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, okay, so the curses. So there's... One, two, there's six realms, six types of people. You have the wildlings, the sunlings, the moonling, the starling, the skyling, and... Nightshade. <laughs> yes. 
Um, so the wildlings are known for their prolific love life and taking lots of lovers. Um, so their curse is that if they fall in love, they have to kill that person. And they also have to consume a human heart at least two times a month to survive. Hmm. Um, the sunlings, they can't go in the sun. It burns their skin and they die. It, like, rips them apart. The moonlings, they can't sail during a full moon. Um, it feels like I missed something on that one because that curse doesn't quite... I guess, as a moonling, all they do is sail on full moons. I don't know. Um, nightshades can't go out at night. The starlings all die at 25, which seems random and extra cruel for mm -hmm. considering that some of the characters in this are like 500 years old. Yeah. So, and then skylings can't fly. But their ruler can, did, can, or... I'm not sure about that, but um, yes, so they all have these different curses, and I don't remember why it was placed upon them. Like, it, their lands were just cursed 500 years ago, and that made, so like Bobby was saying, it's a realm, and they all live in different realms, but that re those realms are controlled by or led by Lightlark, mm -hmm. like the singular one. Um, and so a curse was put on it that they can't access Lightlark except for 100 days every 100 years. And it's been 500 years since that curse. Yes. Um, and they get together, and it's kind of like Hunger Games style, where they all get together and they have to fight and kill each other for 100 days to try to break the curse. Um, but... If a ruler dies, all of their people die? Yep. Now, does a ruler die every year? They're supposed to, yes. So there used to be more realms. I don't think all of their people die, do they? I can't remember that so. detail. Um, a ruler's power was the life force for their, of their people. So if one died with, oh, without an heir, all their people would die along with them. It's so it's without an heir. In order to be in the games, they couldn't have an heir. So there used to be more realms? Plot holes. I don't know. Because, um, yeah, this is one of those... That was one of those things I couldn't put my... Grasp my head around. Was like... But if one dies every year for five years and all their people die... There had to have been more previously. But also, if... Isla was to be like in that first trial in the first 25 days. If she was to lose and get injured, she would be kicked out of the games and then she would be bred to produce an heir. So they only breed the cripples? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's one way to look at it. I was like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it from that perspective. <laughs> it's, um, it's accurate, though. <laughs> yeah. But I, I really liked Isla. I think she was a living embodiment of what a lot of women, like, are searching for. Like, that witchy... Um, She's supposed to be a wildling, so they're supposed to be incredibly pretty. So I was thinking, like, the siren song, right? Of, like, incredibly pretty. And then um, being, like, witchy in touch with the earth and animals is the people. We later find out Isla doesn't have any powers. Um, but she's strong. She's, like, trained in swords at 26 years old. Better than a lot of these dudes that are 500 years old. So it's, like... I did really like the badassery and the witchy side. Pagan witchy vibe. Yes. That Isla had. I really, you know, I really dig that. Because I want to show you this. Because I had such a hard time with this. 
So... So those are two of the characters. So it's Isla and Nightbane. And then what the hell's his name? Aro. Aro. Yeah. That's not exactly how I picture I thought he had longer hair. I thought he had long hair. I don't know. Maybe that is long for their realm. His hair's longer. <laughs> I'm so confused. I also thought he was going to be more of like a dad figure at the beginning. So I thought he was going to be more like not attractive. That caught <laughs> that caught me in a curveball. <laughs> yeah, I I would agree that I thought he was like appeared older, which there's nothing wrong with older men, but I just thought he was like older. Yeah. And cuz he's 500 and 50-ish years old. Yeah. Old enough to remember the curse, right? Yeah. And to be ruling during that curse? Yep. So three yeah, of we them. Won't, we won't sit on the, on the ages too long, because that'll get you <laughs> confused. But um, <laughs> I just, you know, I believe we've talked about these whole, like, age gaps before. And, like, as two women near or in their 30s, that don't necessarily enjoy being around people that are early 20s, I just cannot imagine being 500 years old and being like, that, that 25-year-old has captivated me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's... You know, like, that's a lot of life experience difference apart. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. This is I don't time. know. Yeah. Maybe they don't mature till they're like a thousand. <laughs> I also don't want an immature guy. <laughs> so I'm screwed. <laughs> um, okay, so we've gone over Isla. Um, Celeste is the starling leader. Are they called leaders? Queens? I'm going to say leaders. Leaders? Yeah. Um. So all the all the starlings die at 25, so we know she's less than. Yeah, I took her as, like, so Isla's supposed to be the youngest leader, and she's supposed to be, like, the youngest ever to go. And then Celeste is, like, 23, like, three years older than her, and she's creeping up on her 25th birthday or something. That's, yeah. that's why they were trying to break the, the curse. Because Isla and Celeste are best friends. Yes, they were very secretive about that. But um, did they ever explain why the Starlings died at 25? Like that was just their random bit of the curse? Yeah, and the curse, the curse was, there was a, there's a prophecy to break the curse, the curses, right? That's why they do these games. The curses were in place because of a huge betrayal that happened in the magic of Lightlark, like, broke, essentially. And it cursed all the rulers because this huge situa this huge betrayal situation happened. Um, so they're trying to break the curse by following this prophecy. And so they all have these ideas about what they need to do. And they're trying, uh, during the games, they're like fighting each other and going through these little tasks like Hunger Games, but they're also trying to find and solve the puzzle of the prophecy. And they don't know who cursed Lightlark yeah, in the lands, realms. Correct. They do not know who was the main culprit of it. Also, one thing I will say that this book has over Hunger Games. I would be far more interested in a Hunger Games where the leader of each district goes to fight to the death. Right. So that does make it a little bit, a little bit more interesting than Hunger Games. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> Um, okay. Another main character is Grimshaw. And he is the Nightshade leader. And he's, again, 550-ish. 500 plus. Mm-hmm. Yep. plus. Because he's one of the um, originals. And he's a little snarky, ain't he? Yeah. He's a little snarky. I really um, adored him. Yeah. 
I felt like you could never quite get a pulse on him. Yep. Hot and cold. Yeah, I like that mystery, though. (laughs) Of, like, what's he going to do next? (laughs) King Aro is the Sunling leader and the King of Lightlark. Um, The interesting thing about him is he's got powers from all of the realms except Wildling and Nightshade. And he's over 500 years old. Queen Cleo of the Moonlings, 500 and some years old. And then Azul, the Skyling ruler. Which, that, that one's kind of cute. He's the Skyling ruler, and his name's Blue in Spanish. Mm-hmm. I really like that, too. <laughs> I was like, I know what that word means, because I'm really bad at Spanish. But I knew, I knew what Azul meant. I was like, that's blue. The sky is blue. This is cute. <laughs> If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified every time we upload. It really helps us out. So yeah, so then we talked about the Centennial. So there's a lot of rules in place for the Centennial, and um, Isla talks about how those had kind of been put in over time, because at previous Centennials, they had just been like, everybody just showed up and started killing each other. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many rulers have gone through this. I would say overall, as you can tell, I've had like a bunch of questions. The rules of the Centennial to break the curse are all the rulers must unite. The original offense must be done again. One of the rulers in their entire realm has to die. You can't kill anyone for the first 50 days, and the first 25 days are trials to showcase your skills, which you are then partnered off to to do all of these other things and follow, to like solve the prophecy, and you cannot kill your partner. Mm-hmm. So basically during these trials, you're showcasing your skills to get to be like a strong pairing, so that way you survive. And they don't, they don't know what the original um, offense was. They yeah. don't know what, what they're trying to undo. Yep. So they're just kind of getting together, fighting each other, and trying to guess. Hi, guys. This is Kristen from the Unbound Book Babes. And if you're enjoying our content, please buy us a coffee with our link down below in the description box. We really love doing this for you each week. Bobby puts in a lot of time and effort editing these videos. Getting sponsors and ads really ruins the flow of an episode. And we want to make sure that we are bringing you the most authentic videos and authentic reviews and that we are not, you know, being swayed by sponsorships. So if you're enjoying this, go ahead and buy us a coffee in the description below. Thank you and enjoy today's episode. Okay, so Celeste and Isla are like besties, right? And so Celeste was like brought up the whole bond breaker thing that she read in a book. Mm-hmm. And so at first, at first I was like, you know, it seems kind of unrealistic that this little 23 year old would be the only person to have read this in a book and to think of this. And then I thought it's in a book. Nobody else has ever opened a book. Um, so it was pretty believable, but they go on their little side quest, right? To find this bond breaker because they think it'll break the curse. Mm hmm. Now, my dad has told me for years that you can tell things are different because there's different words for them. And so, to me, I just was like, I don't think the bond breaker is going to be a curse breaker um, because they're different words. And that just, it seems like the characters should have caught on that they're different things. Yeah. (laughs) Different words. Yeah, I had, I don't know, I had a lot of feelings about their friendship from the get-go. In so many of them, I was just questioning so much, so much of their interactions the entire time. Yeah. (sighs) Which is unfortunate, because we're here for girly power, and then... And then it was not girly power. Not girly power at all. (laughs) (laughs) I also felt like, um, I felt like, uh, the author was trying to do too much. 
Um, like, I enjoyed the story and everything, but I feel like there was times where she just kind of got out of her depths. Like, those little moments where she was trying to play, like, political games. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of never, like, brought it full circle. So when they kill um, those, like, seven noblemen Mm -hmm. from the Moonlings, and you're just like, oh, wow, that's that's a pretty powerful statement that you're making here. Yeah. But then it was just kind of never brought up again, and it was never, really, really brought up as, like... But it just seemed like like that was like a really powerful play, and then it kind of just was never brought up again. But I feel like somebody would have noticed if yeah, nobody talked about it. Nobody brought it up. <laughs> nobody brought it up. I was like, wait, always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. So I feel like that's one of those things that you know, if she would have made those like seven random mercenaries, that would have made. More sense. Sure. Nobody noticed those guys going missing, you know? So she was just kind of like, and she's young, right? This author's super young. So I wouldn't expect her. Is she super young? Averagely young. 28? She's 27 or 28. Yeah. Probably 27 when the book came out. I don't know. Um, Young enough that I don't think she would have any sort of like political, like a political mindset. Yeah. So she was dabbling. And that one particular part just kind of fell flat for me of like what nobody noticed nobody <laughs> noticed yeah <laughs> i did really oh. like how no go ahead i did really like how like every realm was very like unique mm-hmm. and like people like you could always tell where everybody was from because of how they dressed and like how they spoke and like things like that. So I really yeah. like the the differences between all of them. And I thought the concept of these these games with these curses was like I love mysteries and I'm like, okay, why did this happen in the first place? So all these things that like, yes, there's some plot holes scattered around, which I do agree with, but um overall, like my desire to really figure out what happened and in because i was like guessing as i was going and this was actually a recommendation from my friend Paige. and as i was listening she had already finished it and i was like texting her my thoughts and there was so much that i actually guessed correctly and like in like in discussions with Paige, she was like i never saw that coming i was like oh yeah I saw that coming big time. I like I just had had the vibes, you know. And then there was. Would you guess correctly? So um, I don't think I guessed anything correctly. I guessed <laughs> about um, Celeste correctly to a degree, mm-hmm. not the very final twist at the end. Um, yeah. Did not see that coming. I guessed correctly about um, Grimshaw and or- King Oro and about her because like she the whole thing is is that Isla has no powers but I was like she has powers but nobody's taught her how to use anything and then I was like she's gonna have be ultimately powerful because of Oro and Grimshaw because I guessed that situation correctly also. <laughs> yeah, but the but the original offense, I started to catch on to that when she started breaking down and figuring out what had actually happened at the original games. I recognized that the the original offense was this ultimate betrayal. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up guessing that once I found out there was two women who were best friends in those original in that original situation. Yeah. So but there is like that That's final lot, twist at the end with like <laughs> in the in the what is the house the house of mirrors is that what it was the wildling yeah, house the land of the land of mirrors land of mirrors place, place of mirrors yeah. yeah i can't recall it's but a, it's a building with just mirrors it's a fun house yeah and it's the wildlings <laughs> like land on light lark but mm-hmm. i guessed i did not see the one I saw the one betrayal coming, but not the second. And I was so angry. So angry <laughs> at the end. 
God, I wanted to just choke some characters. <laughs> so, yeah. On that second portrayal, when you didn't see it coming, did you feel like it was a little manufactured for the book? Or were you able to like look back and be like, oh, okay, it makes sense? Or was it like... Because sometimes I feel like authors put in those plot twists and you're like, oh my god, that came out of left field and like, what? <laughs> Once I recognized the separation of like her dreams, like reflecting on her dreams, I was like, nope, that makes sense. Because at first I was like, what? Where did that come from? And then I thought about it and I was like, oh, and when that part was revealed, I was like, ah, that, I see. I see how this all went down. Yeah. Also, I know in a lot of these fantasy novels, um, they really put the main character through some shit. Yeah. Um, our girl Isla, she went through it for all 20 plus years of her life, right? Like, mm -hmm. training was actually just thinly veiled torture. Yeah. Like... I would have laid down. There was plenty of times. <laughs> it took me days to get back. No, I would have laid down. I, I live here now. <laughs> I live here. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Which honestly, though, like, you know, part of like who was behind that whole situation of her like being tortured and then like the how Isla figures it out and is like, oh, you're the reason why. And, like, she's like, now I'm the bane of your existence because you t you forced me in this situation. You're the reason I know all the things that I know. Now I'm going to take all those tools and use them on you. So <laughs> I thought that was crazy. I was like, well, good Wait. thing you went through it because now you're tough as nails <laughs> and you're going to, you know, you know, get your revenge. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm bouncing around a little bit because I... I'm not great at ordering my notes because I just throw down thoughts as I have them. <laughs> um, so these thoughts are not chronological in the book. Um, but uh, there's a challenge where they all have to like drink a truth serum. And then um, mm. at the bottom, like written in the tea leaves or scraped into the cup. I wasn't super clear about that. I think it's written in the tea leaves mm -hmm. um, is like their darkest secret. Yeah. And then like whoever, who, Whichever leader chooses to share, um, like, wins that challenge. Mm -hmm. And I gotta be honest, it was Oro's challenge, and he's the only one that chose to share his secret. It just felt like trauma dumping. It just felt like Buddy needs a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I also, yeah, I mean, that's fair, but I, I thought it was very <laughs> clever of him because... He designed a challenge that he won. <laughs> like, yeah. Set yourself up for success, bud. <laughs> Drop a bomb while you're at it. It's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't know what health insurance in Light Lark is like, but. <laughs> yeah. I always was like, I want to know what everybody's cup said. Everybody's cup. Yeah. It's. Not fair. I'm the reader. I'm supposed to know it all. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Tell me That's more. one of those times that that being like from a single having a book from a single point of view is kind of a bummer. Mm hmm Because like like the way SJM writes. Mm. Right. So she writes from like that third person where we get to like jump in between everybody's thoughts. Mm hmm Um, instead of like you're like a little Isla being like, huh. I wonder what the cups say. <laughs> Yes. You're like, I get that mystery in my own life. You tell me what their cups say. <laughs> Overall, um, out of 10, what would you rate this book? Can we do five? Because I'm more used to that number. Out of 37, what would you rate this book? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, out of five. Fine, we'll be like everybody else and we'll do out of five. Thanks. <laughs> um... <laughs> I did I give this a grading though first before I I wonder if this is the one that deleted my thing on Goodreads that ticked me. I think this is the one that made me so angry because 
my Goodreads app. Freaked out. Did you rate it recently? No. Was it was it back in 2023? Um, no. Or yes, yes it was. <laughs> yeah, did, I didn't rate it. I give it my your rating four stars. I give it four stars. Four stars. Yeah, which yeah. I yeah, I'll stick by that. Did you have any favorite scenes or favorite feelings, vibes that you wanted to chat about? I love Isla so much. I really do like her as a character. The ending and everything she does and how clever she, like, you know she's clever the whole time. Because she gets through all this shit with all these 500-year-old people who haven't figured shit out. And she's figuring shit out and, and actually, like, discovering stuff and... All of that. And then her epic finale on how she just gives it her all and says, I'm doing this. Like, so good. Um, I really liked the Orzo in the cave in her when they were just, like, chatting and waiting for the egg in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> that's I guess that's the best way to put that scene. Um, I do... Like I said, Grimshaw, I adored him for so much of it because that mystery around him, I, you just want to know so much more. And, like, there's a Nightbane, which is book two. And, of course, Grimshaw's realm is called Nightbane. So I really, really want to read it because I still want to know more about him. But yeah, so I would say those are probably like my favorite things about the book and like a favorite scene and like why I think I'm actually going to continue the series. Is that out already? It is out. Yes. It's out. It is out. Okay. Yeah. I would say I give this book like a like a three, like just a middle of the road. Yeah. Just middle of the road. I I really enjoyed listening to it. Um, I got sidetracked. Because I I would be like listening and then I'd be like, wait, what? I have so many additional questions. Like, so I could have done with a little more world bu building, a little more background, a little more connecting the dots on some stuff. Yeah, I could agree with um, that. And I also think that's something that sucks about audiobooks is because I get easily distracted. I'm like, shoot. I missed a detail somewhere, I think. Like, you just think, you just have that feeling that you missed a detail. And I also listened to this on an audiobook. So I, I think there are some things I, I missed too, as the first part of our conversation demonstrates. <laughs> so, um, yes. If you have, if you, the listener, if you have any answers, um, drop them in the comments. We're not saying we're right. We're just saying we're bad listeners. And I've said that. How long have we been on the air now? A year? A year and a half? Yeah. I've never claimed to be a good listener. Mm -hmm. So I might, I may have missed something. So let mm -hmm. me know. I'm open to learning <laughs> about what I miss. <laughs> and now on to a little bit of controversy. Hey, everybody. Bobby here. Just popping in to say that if you want to hear this part of the episode, follow the link down below to our Buy Me a Coffee page and check it out. This is exclusive content for our members over there, and we're really excited to be able to bring this to you. I hope you enjoy it, and until next time, keep reading.